<laughs> uh, very good. Now, it would be unforgivable. I know we're, we're in high spirits now. We had a great time talking to Jeremy. But I can't not ask you about the NHR news because we haven't spoken, Bob. You haven't been on our screen here at Good Morning Portugal and responded to the scrapping of the NHR scheme. I imagine you've had a few phone calls. Yeah, um, it wasn't unexpected, to be honest with you. Like There was, there has been murmurings around the ditching of the NHR for a long time. And actually, I was surprised it wasn't ditched before the Golden Visa even because there was, I suppose, probably a better argument with regards to why the, the Golden Visa go and why it was sort of poking so many people. The, the, the NHR was by far a lot more successful program than the Golden Visa in the numbers-wise. Mm -hmm. I don't know the numbers, but I know, like, um, if you look at even from the French side of it and so on and so forth, um, and from a European side of it, a lot of people ended up moving their tax residency to Portugal and had been very, very successful. Um, but I could also see where it sort of poked a stick in the eye of the locals, where they were imagining that all these rich people are coming over here and not paying tax and we have to pay tax, etc. Yeah. What we're missing and what everybody still seems to be missing is that when wealthy people live here, they spend money here. And that means that every penny they spend, 23% of it's taxed anyway, through stealth mm -hmm. taxes, etc. And they buy things that pay salaries and um, keep businesses moving and so on and so forth. So I, I, I think actually a bit like your, your last speaker, Jeremy, had to say was you have to look at things from everyone's point of view for sure um, and, and in context as well. So I can understand how it would, it would poke people in the eye, um, but not understanding what it's doing for them. Um, at the same time, and then at this, if you look at it from the other side of it, it's like, well, look, we're bringing all this money in, and we're we're spending all the money in this country, and we are actually, uh, you know, uh, adding to society and so on and so forth. We're not just coming over here to to bleed the country dry. Yeah. So I think that um, the programs that had brought out were brought out for a reason to bring people here for a tax take, but it was a different form of tax take, and it brought taxes and people to spend money into Portugal that otherwise wouldn't have done it. Like, uh, I think the French was by far the biggest uh, uptakers of the NHR. And Mr. Hollande, who declared a 70% tax, I think it was 70% was the tax bracket for the wealthy in, in France. And also something like the, on the wealth taxes on their, on their properties and so on. Per, he ran them out of France rather than the Portuguese sort of, uh, yeah. I would say, attracted them. But, yeah, yeah, but yeah. the one thing that I'm very mindful is that we're in competition with lots and lots of other countries within the world uh, and Europe, especially to attract the type of people here that can add to the economy and yes. that can add to society and so on and so forth. And I think that from my point of view, that you get politically bullied uh, in a sense that uh, you're forced to sort of make a decision that's going to please the voter rather than actually help the voter. Yes, and, exactly. What, what a and, brilliant distinction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, they, so, that's such a good point, Bobby, because it's so overlooked that the, the wealthy are the investors. The wealthy are the ones coming in and in, in taking these dilapidated buildings and turning them into units that are rentable or sellable or, you know, doing all this stuff. And it just really aggravates me to um, it's just always this this negative and people aren't seeing the huge amounts of money coming in that are paying people and that are actually affecting people in a positive way. And it is a lot of lip service, all this, uh, a lot of this political stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, if it works in reverse now and people start to leave Portugal because mm -hmm. just for example, um, the tax take is going to drop s significantly. And one of my sort of things, even when I was talking to golden visa investors years and years ago, that they were saying like, what happens if they end this program? And I said, well, I can't really see them ending the program because it brings in so much money that pays for the social agenda that they want to portray. And uh, like, where are they going to get the money if they stop it? And you're talking about billions upon billions upon billions. So, um, but they stopped it. And um, uh, well, they didn't stop it, they changed it. And they've changed it to a point where it's not really interesting for investors to do it. So now yeah. I was, I was actually in um, Beirut the other day and flying out and there's a huge big sign in the Lebanese airport, in Beirut airport, um, Golan Visa Greece. And not only was it Golan Visa Greece, but it was 
you can buy a property and pay it over a five-year period by paying such and such and so on. So you are wow. making it very uh, obtainable. Bulgaria has it, Hungary has it, lots of countries have it. Um, and you will see that a lot of countries also have tax incentives for wealthy people to move there as well. So one thing is that we seem to forget we're in competition, as in Portugal is in competition, for that investment. And you, you, it's one thing to get a big, huge corporate company to come in and do a big investment, build a factory and create loads of jobs and all that kind of stuff, um, which is good. But a lot of the time, those people, those head offices, are in the likes of Dublin and so on and so forth, where they actually get away the corporate tax that's 10%. Mm -hmm. um, but they're using the low salary base in, in, in other countries to, to get the work done, let's say. Yeah. Um, where if you have people who move here and live here and buy cars here, by the way, and if you know anyone who's bought a car in Portugal knows that we're probably about 20 or 30% higher than anywhere else in, in Europe, illegally, by the way. Um, and, yes. um, and, and the Portuguese government just continued to pay the fine because... They don't want to see their, their car industry stepped on by Spain. Because I mean, you don't want to drive into Spain and buy a car for 20% or 30% cheaper than you can buy it in Portugal. And that's their argument. But it actually goes against the whole open market thing. Um, where do I see the NHR going? Well, obviously it's going. But um, I still think what, what uh, you were saying earlier on, uh, what Heather was saying even, was that uh, a lot of people will still... Oh, not Heather, sorry, should, before. The, to move to Portugal to save money is probably not the best reason to do so um but for people to invest in portugal who are not moving here that is a different uh kettle of fish altogether so mm -hmm. for me the nhr and the, the d7s and so on and so forth it shouldn't be affected too much with regards to people that want to move to portugal yes it is it is, it is a d, d incentive um that for example americans especially who will now have to pay tax in both places, but regardless where they live in the world, you have to pay your American tax. And the big incentive in Portugal was that, well, I have to pay it in America, but at least they don't have to pay any more here, yeah. which was sort of like the big part of it. But that gave them more money to spend. And yes. that meant that they had more to spend and they were paying 23% tax on everything they spent. Yeah. So so from that point of view, but I, I, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference to the amount of people that's going to move here. I think what will happen is because the biggest market was the French market by far and, and the, the, the American market had started to grow. But I think the American market is looking at, at Portugal for a completely different reason. Mm -hmm. All of it's to do with, with America, not Portugal. Yes, yes. Yeah, I just saw an Economist article about that, about, you know, saying exactly that people are moving away from America rather than, well, they're choosing Portugal, but their main motivation is to be moving away from America, from the United States. Yeah, well said, Bobby. Um, and yeah, we'll come to, we are coming to the end of the show. There are a few things I wanted to, to bring back in because uh, we were making the point earlier, Bobby, about the importance of getting professional advice. This is a very individual matter, isn't it, ultimately, yes. on what you'll save uh, or what you'll be spending. 